All right, today on What To Do, we are working on the Ventrac machine. It's a 4200 VXD. The problem we're having is the steering cylinder is leaking hydraulic fluid every time you turn, it's pouring out. So we're gonna remove the cylinder and this is how you do it. All right, so I already uh, took one nut off of here, but this is the machine right here. All right, and you're gonna need a one and 16th, one sixteenth socket, okay? Now, this is your steering, steering cylinder here. When you turn, we are pouring fluid out of here, as you can see, all right? So I went ahead and I took this nut off. Now you're gonna have to get this machine up in the air a little bit. Uh, I do have a lift here in the shop, but this lift actually didn't fit this machine. So what you're gonna need to do, hopefully you can see this. I put a two ton under there and it's right on uh, you can't see it from there, <clears throat> but it's underneath the center of the vent track on the frame. Yeah, you got a better look there. All right. The reason I did that, this bolt is accessible, but in order to get to this other bolt up here, I had no ground clearance to get my gun in there on an angle. And taking that off by hand was just really difficult. So I needed to get that up in the air a little bit so that I had enough room for the gun <clears throat> to get onto that bolt. All right, so I already went ahead and took that nut, that nut off. And what I'm gonna do now is, I mean, this is really tight here. I am going to, without destroying these threads, just get a little pry bar and try to pry this nut out of here but I can only do this with one hand. So let me pry that out and I'll be right back. So I took this bar here, had a little lip on there. The bolt's still in there, but basically I just stuck it in there and banged down on that bolt. And I got it pretty much almost out. So what I'm gonna do now, I can't fit my bar in there, is see if I can get some type of a punch, put it down on an angle, and tap it, tap that bolt out the rest of the way. Got the bolt out of there. Now that should free this up here. Okay, we got that part out. Now, uh, rather than take the hydraulic lines off now, I think what I'm gonna try to do is remove that second bolt with my impact. And uh, I should be able to pull this cylinder out a little bit more to give me clearance to get to that back hydraulic fitting back there because I can't get to it. Well, I probably can, but I bust a lot of knuckles, but I want to remove that other uh, bolt on the other end and pull this cylinder out a little bit and then I'll go ahead and remove the hydraulic. All right, I was able to get that. Uh, that one actually fell out once I started loosening it with the air gun, the whole thing just dropped out. Uh, so that, I didn't really have to beat that out. I was kind of worried about that because you have very limited room in there to really tap this thing out. So now, we should be able to just slide this out, like so, and there you go. Now, I have a lot more room to get here to my uh, hydraulic lines. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take these two lines off here, but make sure you got a bucket underneath it here and you got some plugs for your lines and plug these up because you are going to leak fluid. I got my pan underneath. Now before I go crazy and take all this off, you really just want to look at your new cylinder. And there's nothing worse than taking a part off and then finding out the other part's wrong. So before we get too far into it, just kind of eye it up. Make sure that your fittings are in the right spot. And you got the right ends on here that match up everything you have there. And need some light on here again everything here kind of matches up identical to what I need there so this part number got this from Lauren and golf it's 23.0129 and that's the steering cylinder for the vent rack. and now to take these off this thing's gonna kind of wobble so what you want to do now is you're gonna put this back in where you got it from. All right, so slide your back in first and slide this back in there. Now when you go to turn this, it won't, this thing won't flop around on you. 
Now the one in the back that I wanted to get off to take these bolts off first for, because there's, there's no room in here, you'll have a zip tie right here. You want to cut this zip tie. After you take this line off, you'll be able to spin this whole cylinder around and get to that other side now, but you're going to have to stick this back in the grooves on each side also to prevent it from spinning. All right, but we got to get this front line off first because it's not allowing me to really spin it all the way around. All right. All right, there. We got it resting back in place. So now when I turn this, all right, see, didn't move the cylinder at all. I'm still able to get that off. All right. Actually, we didn't have any fluid come out of there, so that's good. Now, we should be able to pull this out and see how much room we got with this one now. This thing, we can go anywhere with. So, I don't know if I could do this with one hand. All right, now, I, what I did was I flipped the cylinder around. So now I'm actually able to take this one off without this spinning around. Now, before you do this, this is where you want to mark because these both have the same fittings on them and you're going to get confused mark your hoses on which one goes to the rear and which one goes to the front all right so we will call that one the front because this is the rear of the machine and we'll call this one the rear but also remember that you flip this around so don't get it confused all right because once you take this off this technically goes the other way so now will be a good time to mark your hoses so that you know where they go back on the other cylinder. These fittings, you don't have to take off right now on here. When we take this hose off and pull this out, we're gonna do these on the bench, and then we're gonna put them in our new one and put it back on. All right, so let me go ahead and take this off. I need both hands here, uh, but it's the same process as that one. Just put your wrench on there and break it free. I got this one loose. No fluid out of there. I also put a piece of tape on here telling me that this is going to be my front. Remember, this is flipped around, so this one will be the front. And I just put one piece of tape on there telling me the blue is my front line. All right, now we can pull this sucker out. And we're free. And we'll take those fittings off on the bench and fit them in our new one. Okay, we got our new fittings on going the right way. And on the end here, you're going to have your grease fittings that will have little caps on them. Just pop them off. Uh, couldn't hurt, squirt a little grease in there now. Uh, Cause you want, this is, you know, gonna move a little bit and pivot and this needs to be greased up. So just grease them now while you have it off. And when you put this back on, just make sure that you have these on the right side. All right, you don't wanna have it flipped upside down like that. And you don't wanna have it backwards either. Okay, so this is actually this, the part that extends. This is a permanent weld. So if you need to know, the part that extends is the part that you would see typically right here. So that's how you know you're putting it on right. And uh, we're gonna grease these up and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fit it back in the machine. When you fit this back up there, you're gonna notice, once you slide it back in the hole up there, you're gonna notice that this end doesn't exactly reach that end. Now that's okay because once you get that end tightened in and you put your hoses back on, you'll be able to turn on the machine and you'll be able to actually use the uh, pressure from the hydraulic fluid to push this out. All right, so once you activate your steering, it's gonna push this out and you can pretty much adjust it to the length that you need at that point. Now, when you put these, uh, before you go ahead and bolt this in, you probably wanna go ahead and put your hoses back on. Remember our blue one is going up there to the front and this other hose will come to the back. So I would put them on before you go ahead and uh, put that bolt in up there in case you need to move this around to get these on properly. You don't wanna cross thread them, then you're gonna have a leak up here. I got my hoses back on, it's pretty simple. Now, there's a very important safety tip because what you're going to do is you're trying to line this hole up that's on the other end. Now, 
down here. And what you're gonna be tempted to do is stick your finger up in that hole as you're moving this cylinder around to line it up. And you are going to crush your finger. So what you wanna do is get yourself a punch that's shaped like a cone here, and I'll show you on the old cylinder. When you stick this in there, you'll eventually get to the spot that is the exact size of it, and you're able to move that around, all right? So use this as your unbreakable finger right here. So put this up in there as you're trying to adjust it and, until you can slide it all the way up in there, and then pull it out, and you know that your hole will be aligned and you can just slide your bolt in. That actually lined up fairly easy. Now I got an adjustable on the top nut there, and I'm just gonna put my air gun on the bottom, and we're gonna tighten it up all the way. She's tightened up, so now you have this pivot because of this that you greased in there. And this will pivot up and down now. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna clean up all this mess, get it out of here. And I am going to uh, start up the machine. Well, I'm gonna take it down off of the jack because I no longer need to get under here. Take it down off of the jack, start up the machine, and uh, we're gonna let the hydraulics itself push this up to where we need it. Now, when I said let the hydraulics do the work, we're gonna sit on the machine, start it up, and as you turn that steering wheel, that cylinder will retract out and we'll be able to line it up. So we're gonna turn the steering wheel with my hand here. There it goes, see it come out? Now, you just wanna retract it out enough where you need it. Come down here, and we still need to come up a little bit more. Uh, so I'm probably going to need my other hand to turn that steering wheel at the same time so I can get this lined up in here. Now, be careful of your fingers, probably should have gloves on, but I'm going to set the camera down. But basically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the steering wheel. Well, I hold it with my other hand and guide it in there. I got it up in there now. It was really easy. Uh, just went right in there. Now, you can take your punch and stick it up in there rather than your finger. And just push it all the way. You get that as straight as possible. Now, we're going to take our bolt. And that should slide right up through there. Bam, just like that. And just put the nut on. And we'll go ahead and tighten that up with the air wrench and the adjustable. And that's it, that's how you do it folks. Please hit subscribe below, give me a like. I'm really trying to get my subscribers up. I'm doing these videos daily. And uh, I appreciate everybody watching and the support. Hopefully I'm helping some of you guys out out there. And that's how you put a Steering cylinder on a Ventrac 4200 VXD, and I'll see you guys next time.